I'm John Bassett with Malcolm Holmline, Conference of Presidents, Major American Jewish Organizations, President-elect Trump, President Sisi of Egypt. We welcome Oren Kessler, Deputy Director for Research and Research Fellow at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Oren, a very good evening to you. Uh, the understanding is that the Trump transition and the Trump, the prospective Trump administration wants to heal the wound of these last years between Washington and Cairo, and that President Sisi and President-elect Trump will see the future together. What does Cairo need from Washington after these years of drift? Good evening to you. Uh, good evening. Thanks for having me on again. Um, I think, you know, you may remember just a few weeks back at the U.N. General Assembly, uh, Secretary Clinton met with three foreign leaders, the leaders of Egypt, uh, Japan, and Ukraine. Uh, Mr. Trump met with one leader alone, and that was uh, President Sisi of, of Egypt. Uh, they had a very cordial meeting. Afterwards, Mr. Trump said that uh, Sisi was, quote, a fantastic guy and that they had fantastic chemistry. And Sisi essentially uh, returned the compliment, saying that he, he thought, uh, he thought uh, Mr. Trump would be a very serious president if, if indeed elected. Now, in terms of uh, what Cairo needs, I think I, I was just in Egypt just a couple of weeks ago. I, I was there for about 10 days, and I, and I just came back. Uh, I think one of the major uh, shifts that the Egyptians are looking for is, is, is merely a shift in, in tone. I don't even think, uh, you know, I think even if, the, if U.S. policy were to essentially remain more or less as it is uh, now towards Egypt, if, if the tone were simply more... Uh, supportive of Egypt's fight against extremists and its and its and and the the, the ISIS threat and the Hamas threat uh, and and the economic problems that that Egypt is going through. If the language were one of of partnership rather than um, sanctimony and sort of a, a patronizing tone, I think that could go quite a long way. Well, President elect Trump spoke about the importance of the Egyptian e e e e U.S. relationship. If, if, in fact, those steps, as you suggested, would be taken, and perhaps more than just symbolic steps, would this diminish their reliance on Russia and this, the, the increasing role Russia is playing with them? So that was one of my one of my questions that I asked my Egyptian counterparts when I was over there, officials and, and top brass in the military. I, and, I, and I would say, well, what is what is what's going on here with with Russia? Are you are you replacing, in some way, the alliance with with Washington with with some kind of alliance with the Kremlin? And they would say, look, the alliance with with Washington is, is our bedrock uh, strategic alliance. However, if if and they, they would they would pose the following scenario to me: if you had a, a friend who abandoned you at, at 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 your hour of need, what would you do? Would you sit there and cry about it, or would you go uh, looking for other friends? And that's essentially how they view their, their outreach to the Russians, to the French, uh, to the Chinese. Even in some sort of strange ways, there's some kind of mini-thaw going on between the Egyptians and, and the Iranians. Uh, and and when, when they talk about this abandonment, I think, I think you know what they mean. They're talking specifically uh, about the fact that the Obama administration held up a portion of the military aid back in 2013. In a critical time. And in a critical time. When, when really the Sinai insurgency was was, was raging, uh, and and held up uh, Apache helicopters and other things that the Egyptians uh, very much felt that they need. And could you just comment on the changing relationship that John and I have discussed uh, in recent weeks? Uh, the apparent changing relationship with Hamas in Egypt is this an attempt to quiet the situation? Is there some other strategic goal in this? So there have been uh, some sort of relatively minor signs of a thaw. Uh, Egypt has opened up the Rafa border crossing a little bit more uh, than it has in the past. But, you know, I've written about the fact that I don't expect any kind of... Uh, I wrote this about, about this recently in, in, in Foreign Affairs, if your listeners want to want to look this up. But I, I, I just think any kind of um, prediction that Egypt will dramatically or significantly uh, thaw relations with Hamas, I just don't think it's it's happening. For the Egyptians, the you know the 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 primary uh, the primary threats that that they see in their immediate vicinity are ISIS in in the Sinai and and um, and on the mainland as well and and the Brotherhood and its and its um, partners and Hamas as we know is effectively the Muslim Brotherhood in the Palestinian territories 
the, the Hamas in Gaza has has worked quite closely with ISIS in the Sinai in terms of training and in terms of uh, the tunnel economy. Uh, I just don't see anything changing dramatically on on that front, and I think that's that's a good thing. Malcolm, you have questions about Saudi Arabia. Yeah, it's very important because it could affect the whole region, and that is the growing tension that we saw in recent weeks between Saudi Arabia and Egypt, the cutting off of the funds, the uh, tension over the islands. Where, where does that stand, and, and is, it, is there a chance to move this back in a positive direction? So really, the, um, the, the Egypt-Saudi sen- uh, tension has been, has been simmering for quite, time, for quite some time. Uh, essentially, the, the Saudis have the feeling that the, the money that they've poured into Egypt, and it's been billions upon billions uh, since uh, since the military removed the Muslim Brotherhood in, in, in the summer of 2013, uh, that that money has just not been well spent. It's been it's been squandered. There's very little to show for it. Egypt's economy is still very much in dire straits, and the Saudis are also tightening their belts, and they don't have they don't have uh, the same ability to throw money around that that they used to. So that's one thing. Uh, additionally, you have a real uh, a real difference of opinion and approach and policy when it comes to Syria. The Saudis are all in uh, in Syria, countering uh, Iranian influence, and the Egyptians are barely there. The Egyptians are consumed with internal matters. They've they're essentially not really players in Syria, and and they're barely players in Yemen as well, which is another battle that's crucial to the Saudis. Uh, so the tension is 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 real. Uh, as you mentioned, the Saudis have essentially cut off or turned off the oil spigot, which was crucial uh, to the Egyptians. I don't see those relations uh, improving in the short term simply because those outstanding issues and those bones of contention remain. I don't see the Egyptians doing any more on Syria, and I don't expect them to start spending Saudi money any more wisely. I think in the medium and long term, both sides recognize that they're part of a, a broader alliance, effectively a, a pro-American uh, alliance, and that strategic considerations will have to come ahead of these uh, relatively petty squabbles. But in the short term, I don't, I don't see a whole lot of movement on that front. The Saudis watched and listened when Donald J. Trump and President Sisi greeted each other, and now with this victory, does that give the Saudis a motive to reconsider this enmity with Cairo? So I think I think uh, Egyptians, particularly members of the Egyptian government, are probably some of the world's happiest right. people right. That, right. that Trump has been elected, uh, and and there are many reasons for that. Chief among them that Hillary Clinton is massively unpopular in Egypt, right. both because the Obama administration is is massively unpopular uh, for reasons that that. You and she watched Mubarak, she watched Mubarak go and didn't do any didn't raise it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's she's considered part of this administration that ushered Mubarak out. We've got 20 seconds, Oren. Go ahead. Okay. So, essentially, they're happy to see her not elected. They're thrilled that Trump is elected. I think from from the sheer perspective of U.S.-Egyptian strategic relations, I think they're on more solid footing uh, now. Oren Kessler of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, Malcolm Holmline. Conference of Presidents, you think there was a celebration in New York when Trump won? (laughs) (laughs) Cairo. The Nile was lit up. Yeah, (laughs) Cairo. I'm John Batchelor.